Jessica was, she was smiley, she was happy, she was absolutely full of joy. She was full of love. When I first found out I was pregnant with Jessica, I was really excited because she was our first child and um, we were really looking forward to starting a family. It was all very, very exciting. We first found out about Jessica's heart condition at the 20 week scan. They couldn't get a very good view of Jessica's heart and obviously being a midwife, I was picking up on some of the words they were using and realising that there was something wrong. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome is a condition where babies are born with only half of the heart developed. The heart can be, is divided in the left and right part and the left part of the heart is not fully developed. The condition was quite serious but the impression I had was that although it's inherently life-threatening it wasn't necessarily life-limiting as much as I thought it could be. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome uh, is a condition that some years ago was fatal. People, babies will die, it was not compatible with life, but these days we have brave surgeons and they act as the plumbers that will resolve uh, and will allow that that uh, right part of the heart that is still vi viable is going to cope with all the needs of, of the body. So when she finally arrived, we got to spend, a, a, I guess, about 40 minutes or so with her. Yeah. And then she had to be taken in the ambulance over to the main hospital to pre prepare for surgery. Most of Jessica's surgeries happened in the first seven months. She had her surgery when she was first born, then one at one week old. Then she had another one at three months old and another one at seven months old. So the, a lot of the first year was spent in hospital in and out of hospital and then we got past the surgery at seven months and we had a nice long period of normality really. Um, and generally speaking she was in good shape you know, yeah. compared to potentially other children with similar condition. She was two years and two months old when Sophie arrived there was yeah it was a lovely age gap. They used to hug and they used to sit at the table playing together and um, lost in their own little worlds. And it was just lovely to watch them together. They were so loving. So Jessica had her last surgery um, the Christmas after she turned six. And after she went back to school, she picked up cold viruses and things like that. Went out for a day with her cousins. Um, she was coughing quite a lot on the way home and struggling to catch her breath, we diverted to A&E. She came home from that with a big bag of antibiotics and medicines and we thought, great, she was pretty settled, it, she had quite a good night. Um, the second day she wasn't so well and then that night she woke up in the early hours um, coughing quite a bit, wanted to come into our bed for a snuggle, so um, she came into our bed she suddenly complained that her back was hurting and Michael sat her up to get a better look at her. I turned on the light and she just collapsed at that point. I think deep down I knew at the point that Michael put her on the floor and I started CPR, I knew it was, I wasn't going to get her back. I just, just had that, that sense that that was it. This was the moment that we'd been dreading all that time and it was then, it was now. And, Mummy and Daddy always, always look up to you. They're always there when you go, when when you're at home. With Sophie particularly, it was hard for us to know what to do to help her. You want to be able to make things better if your children are upset and things. You want to be able, you, you can fix it most of the time. And it was really hard to have something like this where. She was absolutely beside herself and devastated and there was nothing we could do to make it any easier for her, any better for her. I miss her calmness. She was very placid, very calm. She balanced Sophie out so beautifully. Just all the little things that, that made her Jessica. You have to start somewhere and that has to start with research and that has to start with exploring you know, ways of treating things. We've been working in three main areas. We develop imaging and computational techniques, trying to improve decisions of the surgeon before, and the quality assessment and checking how everything is going after the surgery. This is the anatomy, the, the heart, the main pipes, and some of them are underdeveloped. So we work on designing what's the optimal amount and size and shape of that extra tissue that needs to be added to the uh, tiny pipes that these babies are born with. Then we check 
how well the pipe is working. We can also track how the heart grows. It's incredibly important and it's not necessary in the short term. It could be important to a child that's born in 20, 30 years time. And we were lucky enough to benefit from some fairly groundbreaking stuff. Had she been born five, ten years earlier, we might not have had her for as long as we did. It's important to support research projects and the thing, kind of things that Action do to help other families because for families like us, potentially gives them that chance to see their children growing up 